Hi, I'm Andy, and in this video we'll be exploring how to attack, detect and defend against the theft of web session cookies. When navigating through a website, your web browser sends multiple requests to a web server for each page that you visit. Taking a super simplified view at an online banking system, you might make one request to view the list of all your accounts, another to view the details of one particular account, and another to transfer some money to a different account. Each of these actions must be authenticated to make sure that the request is genuine and came from you, but it would be inconvenient to have to keep typing in your password for every single request. So, most websites use the concept of a session token, a unique identifier to link together each of your web requests. This identifier is stored as a cookie value, and it gets passed back and forth with each request to the site. Once you log in, the website associates your session ID with your account details. The session ID, in effect, acts a bit like a temporary password. We can see this in action by observing a logon process with the browser developer tools, accessed by pressing the F12 key. Here I'm navigating to a Nextcloud file storage server and logging in. Or we can see by examining the communication between the browser and the server that the server issued me with a cookie containing a session token in the very first response. This value is then sent back to the server in subsequent requests. My logon details are only sent once and checked by the server once, after which the web app issues me with a new session token associated with a valid login to my user account. After a user has logged into a website, their session token becomes a synonym for their login credentials. That means any attacker who's able to obtain the session token can then assume the identity of that user. Most sites do a good job at protecting the session token whilst it's in transit between the browser and the server by encrypting traffic with HTTPS. However, session tokens are vulnerable to theft while stored at rest in a browser's cookie database if an attacker finds a way to run code on their target's device. In this example here, a user is tricked into running a malicious executable which creates a connection back to an attacker's machine running Metasploit. Metasploit comes pre-packaged with many different payloads for extracting data from browsers. Here I'm using the payload which targets Firefox. Amongst the data extracted is the cookie database, which lists all of the cookies and their values set by any website this user has visited. Here we can see the session cookie contained in a session token for the next cloud site. The attacker just needs to copy this value and insert it into his or her own browser's cookie database. Now, any subsequent request to the website includes this session token, which bypasses the logon screen and grants the attacker access to the user's account. Note that because the logon process has been bypassed, this technique remains functional even for accounts and services which have multi-factor authentication enabled, like our example here. There are also several web-based techniques that an attacker may be able to use to get their hands on a session token, but web application security is a much larger topic which I'll cover in a future set of videos. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you don't want to miss them. There are two places to potentially detect and defend against this attack. First, we could try to detect the theft of session cookies from the target user's device. Or secondly, we could try to detect the use of stolen session cookies on a target website. File access auditing on an endpoint device can show which processes have accessed which files, and can be activated on Windows by group policy. But it can produce a lot of logs very quickly, so we'll only actually log file accesses if explicitly defined on a folder by folder or file by file basis. So here, after applying the group policy update, I'm modifying the file auditing properties for the Firefox profiles folder, which is where Firefox stores its cookie data. To reduce more noise, if these logs are being fed into a seam, then they could be further filtered to remove any where file access is from the genuine Firefox process. In our attack scenario, the victim machine already had file access auditing turned on and configured to monitor the Firefox profile directory. 
This has created events in the security event log for each file accessed as part of the Metasploit payload. Each event includes the name and location of the process. We can clearly see that this is not Firefox.exe. It's worth noting that an attacker could hide from this detection method by injecting code into a browser process or by examining the memory of a running browser process, but those techniques will have to be topics for future videos. From a web server's point of view, the session token is exactly the same regardless of whether it's sent along with a genuine user's request or with an attacker's request. Some other data points are different though. For example, the source IP address of an attacker's request is probably going to be different, so log analysis could help identify the use of a stolen token. This might be fraught with false positives, especially as a user's source IP address can change for genuine reasons. For example, they could be using a residential internet connection which has a dynamically assigned IP address which changes every few days. Or they might use a portable device and move it between a home, a cafe and an office. An attacker wanting to use this technique to steal session cookies needs to be able to run malicious code on their victim's machine in order to achieve the attack. Therefore, applying standard endpoint security protections can go a reasonable way to defend it against it, such as using antivirus software or configuring application control to limit what executable code can be run. But of course these aren't completely foolproof. Server-side defences to protect the use of stolen session cookies are a lot more challenging to implement given the likelihood of false positives and the negative impact on usability. For example, a service could link each session to a specific IP address and require a new login if the source address changes. Whilst this would indeed thwart an attacker's attempt to use a stolen session cookie, it would have a detrimental impact on user experience. Users would need to log in each time their IP changed for genuine reasons, such as switching Wi-Fi networks, moving physical location, or just every day or two if using an internet connection with a dynamic IP address. A midway point could be to use some metadata about an IP, such as a GeoIP lookup, to trigger a fresh login if requests start to come from a different country. Although, again, it should be noted that GeoIP services are not without their inaccuracies too. The usability trade-off needs to be a risk-based decision on a case-by-case -case basis. For example, an online bank would likely introduce stricter controls than a news website, given the increased impact and likelihood of a financially motivated attack. A similar risk-based decision needs to be made around the lifetime of a session token. Limiting a token's validity reduces the time window that an attacker has to take advantage of their stolen session token, although, again, this impacts usability. Finally, there's an element of user behaviours here. If a user logs out from a service once they've finished using it, their session token is immediately invalidated. But again, usability makes this an unattractive option for all but the most critical of services. That about wraps up this video. If you found it useful, please do give it a like and consider subscribing if you want more of this sort of content. Drop a note in the comments if there's anything you think I've missed around attacking, detecting and defending against the theft of web session cookies, or if you have a good idea of what topic I should cover next. I'll see you next time.